What's up? My name is Technova here for Troubleshoot, and in this video, we're going to be covering something similar to previous videos where we go through every setting inside of a game and benchmark exactly what the difference is when we change it around. So I have two setups, my desktop PC with an NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti and an AMD Ryzen 3900X, as well as a whopping 96 gigabytes of RAM. So the only bottleneck here will probably be my graphics card, the 1080 Ti. My second PC, or laptop rather, I also benchmarked and you'll see the results in this video. Video. It's a much more underpowered machine with a GTX 1050, an i7 7700HQ and 24 gigabytes of RAM. Once again, it'll also be a GPU bottleneck, of course, because of the much more underpowered GPU. So inside of this video, we're going to be running through every single option inside of Call of Duty Cold War and see exactly what effect it has on FPS. This is more than just an optimization guide. I'll be showing you the effect of each and every single setting. And by the end of it, you'll have a much better idea of what each setting does for you. Note that I don't own an RTX card so those settings won't be included in this video. Anyways, enough of this, let's just get right into the video. So starting off with field of view. While you'd expect something like this to not have much of an impact, it really does on much lower end computers. The more that you see on your screen, the more that has to be loaded and drawn in with every single frame. My 1080 Ti didn't see much of a difference with this, however my much more underpowered 1050 saw up to a 4% drop in FPS the wider the field of view was set. Next up, texture quality and model quality both have the same sort of effect going. The higher these settings, the more VRAM is required to keep textures and models loaded. And of course, probably also RAM as well, though that wasn't a limiting factor here. My 1080 Ti didn't seem to have too much of a difference between low and ultra settings, although the maximum FPS seemed to rise the higher the setting went, which was really odd. However, the average FPS stayed about exactly the same at around 104 to 101 within margin of error. The same for model quality, it stayed at almost almost exactly 100 average FPS, though the higher this setting was, the lower the max FPS was. Really, changing these two effects shouldn't have too much of an effect on your computer if you have more than enough VRAM. However, on my laptop with a 1050, if you have a look at these results over here, you can see that there's a slight downwards trend as more VRAM is used, loading more textures and models. This is especially noticeable with the 1% and 0.2% lows, as the more that's loaded into VRAM, the more stuttery and affected the game becomes, the higher the setting is. Model quality. Texture quality didn't seem to have too much of an effect, I'm assuming because once it's loaded into VRAM, it's just simply pulled and stuck onto textures, however models have a lot more to load into the actual game instead of just a picture being stretched across an object they have thousands of little points and vertices to render out so once again the higher the setting as long as you have enough vram to use it shouldn't really affect your fps However, it will affect stability on lower end graphics cards, especially model quality. Then we have special effects quality. While my little benchmark didn't feature any explosions or anything like that, there was a definite downwards trend on my 1080 Ti. However, my 1050 seemed to be unaffected by this quality option. The only thing that did reliably drop was the maximum FPS. Screen space reflections gave me a couple more FPS when it was disabled, about five or 6%. However, when it was enabled, either set to low or high, it didn't seem to have an effect being set to low or high, having it disabled however did reliably give me much more FPS. On my lower powered 1050, having it between low and high did have some sort of an effect, however on my higher powered GPU it had absolutely no effect between low and high. Then we have object view distance. Once again, I'm pretty sure this is something that will be limited by RAM and VRAM. On my 1080 Ti, this had absolutely no effect no matter what I had this set to, for both average, maximum and minimum FPS. The same exact thing is said for my 1050, however there was a slight downwards trend when we changed it from low to medium and high. Even though it's slight, it's a couple of FPS that you may want to claw back, however on higher powered graphics cards you may not notice too much of a difference by having this set to higher options. Then you have water tessellation. Now of course I was testing this on the map Armada where I was looking over the ocean, looked towards the ship, looked back to the ocean, scoped in, scoped out. On my 1080 and my 1050, both experienced a severe drop in FPS while the setting was enabled compared to disabled. But of course, I was completely surrounded by water and that's where I was doing the benchmark. For maps that don't have as much water, I can't see too much of an FPS difference there. However, at least on Armada, this does make a huge difference. And if you have the setting disabled instead of enabled, you can expect far more FPS, anywhere between one to 5%. Then these next few all depend on lighting. Volumetric lighting had a definite downwards trend the higher the setting was set on both my 1080 and my 1050. Shadow quality had almost no effect on my 1080 Ti 
DPI, no matter what setting this was set to. However, on my 1050, it did cause a couple of FPS to drop when the setting was raised higher, as a definite slight downwards trend. Once again, this may have to do with VRAM. Then, dynamic shadows. The higher the setting is, the more FPS you can expect to lose. I saw this both on my 1080 and my 1050 though it was definitely more pronounced in the maximum and 95th percentile over the average. On average, you didn't seem to lose too many FPS. However, the bursts of high FPS was definitely less common, especially on the 1050. Then we have special effect shadows. On my 1080 Ti, there was a slight loss in FPS the higher the setting was set. However, it wasn't really noticeable. Enabled and disabled don't really seem to matter. The exact same thing was said for my 1050, though the 95th percentile seemed to drop a little bit. So I was sitting closer to the average than the maximum FPS that I got compared to my 1080 Ti. So enabled or disabled, it doesn't really matter here. Weapon shadow on both my 1080 Ti and 1050 had almost no effect. However, it did have a little bit of an effect on the 95th percentile and maximum FPS on my 1080 with a downwards trend when it's enabled compared to disabled. However, on my 1050, it didn't seem very phased whether the setting was set to on or off. However, average FPS stayed almost exactly the same or at least with Within margin of error. So, enabled or disabled, it doesn't really matter here. Then on to one of the more predictable ones, anti-aliasing quality. The higher the setting was set, the more FPS you can expect to lose. On my 1080 Ti, I gained 10% by setting this to disabled compared to ultra. And on my laptop, I saw the exact same thing except it was only 5%. Of course, I am only getting 100 FPS on my laptop instead of almost 150 on my desktop, so the difference will probably be slightly less noticeable, but it is definitely there. So, the lower the better. Ambient occlusion quality didn't seem to have too much of an effect, however, changing this from disabled to any of the other options did cause a couple of FPS to be lost, though it's definitely within margin of error on both my 1050 and 1080. Motion blur, of course, is completely user preference. No matter what you had it set to, it didn't really cost any extra FPS, however, it did cause the maximum and 95th percentile FPS to drop on my 1080 Ti, and my 1050 didn't seem too phased at all. Why exactly was this? Well, it probably has something to do with resolution, where my desktop was running at 2K and my laptop was running at a much, much lower resolution, meaning fewer pixels to motion blur, so probably less was affected there. Then we have motion blur quality. Once again, well within margin of error, absolutely no difference between low and high on both my 1080 and 1050. However, on my 1080 Ti, the higher the setting was, the more my maximum FPS seemed to climb, which is really odd. I don't think you can take much from this, as everything else stayed almost exactly the same. Then, surface scattering. Once again, absolutely no difference between disabled and enabled on both my 1080 Ti and my 1050. Order independent transparency, both resulted in a downwards trend for maximum FPS the higher the option was set. However, average FPS wasn't too affected, neither was the 1% or 0.2%. The only thing that seemed to drop reliably was the maximum FPS achieved. Then we have VRAM usage target. This didn't seem to have too much of an effect as my laptop was running on low graphic settings to give me at least good FPS and my desktop was running on medium to high so it wasn't going to use too much here. The higher the setting was set, the more maximum FPS I gained on both my 1050 and my 1080. However, average FPS was basically left at exactly the same number. On my 1080 Ti, the average dropped ever so slightly and my 1050, it raised ever so slightly the higher the setting is. I don't really think that you can draw anything conclusive from this. Of course, having a higher V VRAM usage target means that you can utilize more of the VRAM available on your graphics card, which is a good thing. I'd recommend having this higher up, as the more that's going on and the more that needs to be loaded should just be able to be taken out of RAM instead of being loaded in and out. And then finally, display gamma. I didn't expect too much of a difference here, and completely not to my surprise, there was absolutely no difference between sRGB and Rec. 709. The only thing that did change a little bit on both of them was the 0.2 percentile and the minimum FPS. If this was changed from sRGB to HDTV Rec. 709, the minimum FPS seemed to drop a little bit. Though of course, I think this is well within margin of error and it shouldn't have too much of an effect on your computer. What exactly is the effect of having the HD texture pack installed and turned on? Of course, this required both textures to be set to ultra and models to be set to high for the biggest impact. That wasn't too much of an issue. However, when running this test, I did notice something more than you might expect. Having it disabled obviously gave me way more FPS than having it enabled. Running around did cause a slight drop in FPS. So I stood still, did my whole looking test, and then for the second test, I ran around. 
Then I went ahead and enabled it, did the standing still test, and then ran around. And of course, exactly as you'd expect, having it enabled causes quite a few FPS to be lost, especially if you're going to be moving around. And having it disabled causes quite a few FPS to be gained while standing still and moving around, of course. Now, while this does have something to do with VRAM, for some reason, my testing software didn't seem to record my VRAM usage for the most important test. And obviously, now I have to go do a 50 gigabyte update if I'd like to get the HD textures back. However, something that way overrides any sort of VRAM usage or FPS test for that matter is the fact that there's consistent stuttering while I had the HD texture pack installed and turned on. After simply restarting the game, it was still there. However, after uninstalling the HD texture pack, the random stuttering was gone. On screen right now, you'll see a frame time recording, which is basically how many milliseconds it takes for a frame to be drawn, sent to the screen and displayed. The longer that this is, the more frame stuttering you can expect, especially if there's spike here. This simply just means that quite a few frames are being drawn in a short period and then one of them takes quite a lot of time to be drawn, taking up one or two FPS worth on your screen, possibly even more. Now I was playing the game at 144 FPS. On average it should take about 6.9 milliseconds for a frame to be drawn. However, the average frame time was somewhere around 10 with the HD texture pack installed. There were quite a few spikes where it jumps to about 45 or 40 plus. That's some somewhere around 8 or 7 frames worth that it stays on one single frame. Now that is quite a bit of stuttering, especially because it happened every 5 or so seconds, and it's very consistent. This happened both while standing still and running around with the exact same delay in between them, both about 5 seconds. With the HD texture pack installed and running around, there was quite a lot of frame time differences, especially with the spiking. However, having it disabled resulted in much more stable frame times where the max member jumps up to once in a while is only about 15 to 20 milliseconds instead of up to 40, taking double the time to draw a single frame. What exactly does this mean? Well, having it installed and enabled basically means that you can expect quite a bit of frame stuttering if your graphics card is not super powerful. Now, of course, a 1080 Ti is quite powerful, but it's not exactly the same as a 2080 or even a 3080 graphics card. So while this may be specific to the 10 series of graphics cards and it may not affect you further on, it does cause some sort of an FPS drop and it will cause some sort of an FPS drop on future graphics cards as well. Having it disabled will result in more stable, higher FPS. As for the stuttering, it may just be a 10 series graphics card thing. So what conclusions can we draw from this video? Well, for most of the settings, the lower you set them, the more FPS you can expect to get. However, some of the options seem to give way more FPS than the other ones. The ones that seem to give lots of FPS when set to disable or the lowest option were screen space reflections at about 5%, water tessellation as well, volumetric lighting at about 8%, anti-aliasing quality at about 10 ambient occlusion at 5%, and finally, order independent transparency at about 5%. The rest of the options gave you up to about 2 or 3% extra FPS when set to lower options, and some of them didn't seem to matter at all, such as special effects shadows and weapon shadows. Though, of course, I would think that those are all situational, and once again, the lower the quality on these settings, the more FPS and the more stability you can expect to get. But anyways, that about wraps up our in-depth dive into each and every single graphic setting inside of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Now, of course, I have a similar video planned for Call of Duty Modern Warfare Warzone, which will be coming out sometime in the future when I get time to benchmark the game on both my PC and my laptop going through every single setting. And of course, if you're curious, you can find the Google Sheet links to both my desktop PC and my laptop in the description down below, where you can go and look at the graphs yourself and the raw numbers. This may help you get a better idea if you'd like to see exactly what went on here. Of course, the link is in the description down below, and to get rid of the long Google Sheets link, there's a short link that's in the description down below and linked on this page over here. That's simply just my website's short link to take you directly to this page here, just to make sharing it a lot easier, as this whole link up here is rather long. But anyways, that's about it for this video. Hopefully you found something useful in it. My name's been taken over here for Troubleshoot. Once again, this is one of the longer videos that it takes me to make. This one took a solid day of working. So hopefully you take something from this video. And if you wouldn't mind, drop a like in the video, subscribe, and check the description down below for optimization guides on multiple games and other Call of Duty Cold War videos, as well as a link to the Warzone optimization video when that eventually comes out. Thank you for watching. My name's been taken over here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.